Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. So glad to see you all here and thankful for you, all of you online. Today, the illustration that Anna shared with us, I didn't know what she was going to do, so I appreciate that, that umbrella. It reminds me, I don't know if you, any of you were here with us in the summertime when we were outside underneath the tent, and we had to hold up umbrellas as we preached because it was so hot outside. It's almost 100 degrees. Uh, that was shown at the start of the service. If you were online, perhaps some of you saw that. But the umbrella also reminds me of how God covers us. And he doesn't necessarily keep us from the storm. Now, we want for God to keep us out of all storms, don't we? I mean, that would be our desire. But God doesn't necessarily withhold the storms. He guards and protects us while we're in them. Umbrella is a great example of that. I picture that, that bird, that mother bird that's covering her little ones in the middle of a storm as the rain is coming and raging. This is how God is for us, how he covers us and helps us. And so we come into this gospel text today from Mark chapter 1, and it is the shortest account of this temptation in the wilderness. And so we see that Jesus came for a purpose. Mark keeps it really concise. If I preach that way, you guys probably love that too, right? concise and simple and short, but he keeps it so short. We see this in Matthew. We see it in Luke as well. Longer accounts of this Jesus being led or driven out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit and being tempted. Here's what's meaningful to me, because I want you to consider this today. What wilderness do you find yourself in? We'll talk about it. <laughs> what wilderness do you find yourself in today? So Jesus was led out into the wilderness, but I want you to understand that prior to being led into the wilderness, Jesus submitted himself to baptism, a baptism by John the Baptist for, for the forgiveness of sins, for repentance. Jesus was baptized, and the text tells us immediately he was led out into the wilderness, not like 10 days later, not 50 years later, but immediately. You and I share in this story because as baptized believers, baptism is God's greatest gift to us in the church where he claims us as his own. He marks us as his children. And so in baptism, you being baptized into Jesus, part of his family, Immediately, even following baptism, you are in the wilderness and Satan wants to tempt you. The world, even our own flesh, wants to lead us in a different way. So as we consider that question, what wilderness are you in? As I was thinking about this text today, I kept, my mind kept gravitating towards the writings of C.S. Lewis in a book that he wrote called The Screwtape, Screwtape Letters. The Screwtape Letters are about, written in the context of a demon named Screwtape, a senior demon who's trying to mentor and coach his nephew, a junior demon, on how to discourage and turn the heart of humanity away from God. When Lewis wrote about this, one of the writings it says, one road leads home and a thousand roads lead into the wilderness. Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. It's easy for you and I to find ourselves in the wilderness, to find us ourselves in those places where we feel all alone. But just like the umbrella covers us, just like a mother covers her little ones, Jesus is with you in the midst of the wilderness. You're not alone. You see, that's a lie of the devil. Even our own sinful flesh tells us that. I feel alone. So Pastor Johnson and I, a few years ago, we were in Israel, and so this is a picture taken from there. You see that on the right side. In that picture, this was in the location where they believe Jesus was led out into the wilderness. It was very desolate. It was barren. It was empty. And you see up in the caves, up in those, those caves up in the mountainous area, 
Perhaps Jesus spent some time in a cave like that over these 40 days. The distinction here for us, because sometimes we feel like God's so far off, he can't relate to me, he doesn't understand me, he doesn't care about me, and yet the Bible tells us that Jesus was tempted in every way. You think Jesus can't relate to you? He spent 40 days, and the full measure that Satan could bring against him was brought to Jesus. Tempted in every way. He can relate to your trials. He can relate to your temptations and your struggles and your hardship. And yet he was without failure. That's what makes him not just a hero to us, but a savior to us. Is that he didn't fail. But he can relate to your struggles. He's been there, literally. So in this book called The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis... It says this, and this was really kind of striking to me. This is the way, as you and I, Jesus faced temptations in the wilderness. So what's your wilderness? What is discouraging you? What is preventing your heart from being embraced by the love of God today? I like what he has to say. He says, this is one of the quotes. But do you remember the only thing, and this is from the senior demon, Screwtape, talking to one of the, his junior nephew, named Wormwood, he says, but do you remember the only thing that matters is the extent to which you separate the man from, his, from the enemy. The enemy for them is God. It does not, not, it does not matter um, how small the sin, the sins are provided the cumulative effect is to edge the man away from the light and out in the nothing. In other words, the goal, sometimes it's subtle, friends, the goal that Satan and all those working against God, God's the enemy to them, is to turn your heart away from the loving presence of God, to create doubt and worry, to have you focus, rather than on trusting in Jesus to be enough for today, to have you focus on the tomorrows and all the fears and the worries that we have, to focus on our anxieties, to worry that it won't be enough, all these things Satan would have us occupied with. Here's one other quote that I wanted to share with you from the book. It says, If you can once get him to the point of thinking that religion is all very well up to, that, to a point, you can feel quite happy about his soul. A moderated religion is as good for us as no religion at all and more amusing. Again, this is set in the context of demons musing about how to corrupt humanity. And so it's striking to me to think about how Satan and all those that work against God want to discourage us and hold us captive, hostage in these places of wilderness where we might believe that lie, that God's not enough, that we are alone that he doesn't have purpose for our lives. And yet all of that is a lie. This is why, friends, it is so good that you're here. And it is so good that you are here, gathering together as the body of Christ. God intends for us to walk together in these places of wilderness. As baptized believers, Jesus being led immediately from baptism into the wilderness, such is the case for you and I. We are in the wilderness, but we're not alone. This is why we need the church and why we need each other. But most importantly, it's why we celebrate that Jesus is with us, covering us in the midst of it. So the text most certainly today, it speaks of the presence of Satan trying to tempt Jesus in every way, he's trying to tempt Jesus, to turn him away from the Father. People have many misconceptions about Satan or the devil. But you know, the Bible speaks about who Satan is or who the devil is, that Satan was an angel, guardian cherub, created good. It wasn't some person that died or other spirit that was as equal to God, but rather an angel created to be good, who rebelled against God, 
who wanted to be worshipped like God. And many other angels came with Satan, cast down from heaven to earth. And so this notion, years ago, who asked me, you know, Pastor, I really want to go see one of those psychics, you know, because I'm just so curious. Maybe they would share something with me that was important. And I said, please don't. Please don't do that. Even if they're well-intentioned, those voices are not coming from God. You see, there is no such thing as ghosts or people who speak to us from the dead. These are all demons that tell lies, that try to deceive. Such is the case for all other things like psychics and witchcraft. And those are not voices from God. I told the student, please don't do that. If you really want to hear about your purpose for life, if you want to understand your direction, turn your heart to God. Why can't he be enough? But you see, this is where the temptation comes in. We're curious. We want other things. We want other answers. We want worldly things. But Satan is limited. He can't be all places. He's not all powerful. He's not equal to God. And yet he causes much trouble even for us. And on this day of temptation for Jesus, those 40 days. So in this short text, we see how Jesus is baptized. We're reminded in that text of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when God announces, this is my beloved Son, the Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. But we quickly move from that baptism. Immediately, it says, He was drove out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, where he was in this wilderness tempted for 40 days by Satan. And the text here where it says this is this is just this one sentence, you know, so other texts expand on this a lot more. But in this one sentence, it says, and he was with the wild animals. I've always pondered that. Why is that important? Jesus was in the wilderness, and the wilderness can seem dangerous. For us, the wilderness can seem like a dangerous place. We can feel alone. There are many things that prowl around that want to devour us. But we're not alone. Jesus was, but we are not alone because he didn't fail. So Satan came, and these are the temptations that he presented to Jesus. After 40 days, think about it, in his weakest point, Satan comes to him and tries to tempt him with want, with pride, and with power. And such is the case for you and I, where we feel the most discouraged, the most low, when we feel at those low points in our lives, Isn't this when temptation often comes? It's not at the best times. It's not when we're the strongest. It's not when we're the most content. It's in those places where we feel worn out, where we feel discouraged. And those whispers, those lies come into our minds and into our hearts and we begin to believe them. But this is Jesus after 40 days pushing the limits of what the human body could endure going without food. This is when Satan comes with the onslaught. We see in the book of Matthew, these are the temptations that he comes with. At first he says, see this, you know, you're hungry. You haven't eaten in so long. If you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Do you see how Jesus is using scripture to defend himself against these temptations and the lies? For us, this may manifest different, you know. It may be more subtle in our lives, but it all comes down to this matter of trust. In times of need, in times of want, do we trust God? When he says that I'm enough, that I have a plan for your life, do we trust in him? That's what he wants. Satan comes with another tactic. He comes with three different tactics towards the end of this 40-day period. He says, if you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus once again uses the scriptures and he says, 
Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So what Jesus is revealing to us is that it's not about testing God, it's about trusting him. You see, we, we often feel like uh, we want more, that we need more. We need more things, we need more stuff, we need more provisions, we need for this to come through, and then I'll trust you. But God just wants your trust now, not when things are just going well. We put God to the test, right, though, don't we? God, I, I, I'll follow you. If you just do this for me, if you just work this out, th then I'll give you some time, and, th and then I'll trust you, and then I'll, you know, just do these things for me. He doesn't want your test, he wants your trust. You see, because if God has your trust, then you will know of his promise. You will know that he's with you. So here's the final one. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give to you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus used the scriptures to guard and defend against these temptations and the schemes of all that would come against God's and that is instructive for you and I. Yes, but hold on, I'll, I'll get to it. We'll talk afterwards, okay? I appreciate it, I love the questions. If any of you have questions about this, please let me know, but we'll talk afterwards about this. So this is instructive for you and I to, to take to our, our hearts this word of God, to treasure the things and the gifts that God has for us in our baptism, that he claims us, that he marks us, that he tells us nothing will separate us from his love and presence. He shields us, he guards us, and he gives us his word. And it's like that. As we feel those temptations to say, away, away from me, away from me, Satan. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. We often find ourselves wanting to chase after the gods of this world the things of this world. But, but God has something better for us. So the culmination of this text ends with the purpose for which Jesus came, to proclaim the gospel, to announce that the kingdom of heaven ha is at hand. The kingdom of heaven has come into your lives. You see, as baptized believers, that means the kingdom of God has come to you. And so no matter what we face, it doesn't mean that it's not hard or that it's, it's trivial. It's very hard at times. But God gives us something we can trust and depend on, something that won't change, something that won't falter. He wants us to trust him so that our hearts are assured of our presence, of our salvation, and of our purpose that's in him. 1 John 4, 4, it says this, You are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he is who is in the world. You see, we all find ourselves in the wilderness Jesus immediately after baptism. You and I, immediately after baptism, we're in the wilderness and the temptation comes. But what's different is that Jesus is with you, walking with you every step of the way. And we celebrate too, because in the resurrection, Jesus defeats this enemy and the ultimate, that ultimate enemy of death, Jesus deals with it, rises from the dead to assure us of this promise, of the hope, of the purpose that you have. He's with you in whatever wilderness you're in. He's with you. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. It is a shield. 
It is your way to guard and protect us against all the things of this world, our own sinful self, and even all the schemes of the devil. Lord, help us to embrace this word, be embraced by you, by your mercy, by your grace, by your love and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.